Hi. I wanted to show you the NativeScript plugin C that Nathan Walker created, and I have been using it uh, over the last couple of days a few times, and I really like it. And I also enhanced it with a new script, and I wanted to show you how easy it really is to create your NativeScript plugin, and I really encourage you to do so. So, um, this is the repository of the C. You really should follow the readme here. It's only a few steps and let's go ahead and do this as well. And um, I want to create a very small plugin which just uh, gives you the package name. So I'm not saying that this, this is the best name you could use for it, but I think it's at least descriptive, so script package name. So uh, the second step, that's the one I skipped right there uh, because I already have TypeScript. It doesn't do any harm if you run it again, but still. Uh, let's go to step four. Uh, run post clone, that's a script I created and that was integrated into the repository. So this will uh, do some of the lag work. Uh, I had to do, uh, which I thought wasn't that nice, so uh, it's about renaming those files over there and uh, also referencing them in a few scripts and doing some other things as well. So the first prompt you'll get is your GitHub username, which is in my case Eddie Verne, and the name of your plugin, that's in this case package name. So it's NativeScript dash package name, but just leave out the first bit. Use that as a name, and then uh, the TypeScript in your uh, plugin will use package name as a class name. And because you clone the repository, you also want to blow away that Git folder and in it a new one, so you don't have the history of this uh, of this seed in your plugin. So let's see, we now have the renamed files and let's open it in our favorite editor code. So here's the, um, well, the plugin. Let's walk through it quickly. Uh, there's a readme you need to adjust, add snippets, add screenshots once you're done, of course. Uh, the package JSON, which now uh, shows you your NativeScript package name, plugin name. There's a few scripts going on here for your convenience. We already ran the post clone script and uh, there's some others as well. Uh, let's do the setup because that's where we left off really. This will install any dependencies you need for plugin development. And um, well, that's the last step really, get to work. So uh, let's do it. So what you get with this uh, seed as well is a git ignore, so anything that you go to git will stay on your machine. Uh, there's npm ignore, uh, so people don't get stuff like screenshots and the demo app. That's not something you really want when you install the plugin, right? Um, there's the most important bits are really in these a TS files which you want to implement. So there's the common file uh, for shared stuff between Android and iOS. There's the iOS TS file which extends common as you can see and the same goes for the Android file. So let's just run it right. We already saw that there were a few convenience scripts over here. One of them is this one, demo Android. So npm run demo android and what it will do is it will prepare the demo and that's defined as run a build, remove the plugin, uh, re-add it, uh, install everything. So it basically blows away everything so you always have a fresh point to start from and it will also compile the TypeScript into JavaScript and you can also see the result of it in the root folder. So this is a bit nasty to hack in, but <clears throat> it's a lot cleaner, right? So TypeScript, yay. Um, 
Oh, and also interesting here is there's a little demo project uh, bundled with this seed, which you really want to adjust and uh, test your plugin features with. Uh, so in this case, the demo oh, isn't really that interesting because there's a few with a layout which only has a message. And if this message isn't set, the page will really be empty and you think, oh, what the hell, what's going on? But Stuff is working, but the message wasn't set. Um, happened to me once. And here's the implementation of the view, um, which sets the message to something that comes out of your plugin. So the plugin is important here. It's assigned to a property here, and it's instantiated here, and then it's used. And you can see because code is this auto completion. Uh, that, uh, well, the message can be resolved. So let's see where that comes from. In the demo app, there's this node modules folder, and there's this com uh, compiled JavaScript file, and also the TypeScript definition is bundled, so you get autocomplete in your, in your app. And you can see that the common uh, class defines a message, so uh, the iOS, uh, uh, definition which extends common also has this property defined of course so that's why you can use dot message over here um, okay so it was successfully deployed on this emulator but it doesn't start yet well I can do that myself right so yeah hey, your plugin is working on Android really working for real it's really working so where does that come from that's where you want to start changing things. Um, there's the common TS, and here's the alert you're seeing, which pops up after two seconds. So you'll want to change this implementation, of course. But um, I'm gonna do a simple change here because I wanted to uh, show you how to uh, extract the package name and offer that as a plugin. I'm gonna do it on Android because I have the Android emulator running. So this is our Android implementation, and what I want to do is uh, first import um, the um, Android application from the, uh, what is it, application module. So now we want to have a constructor here. As well, and you can implement it any way you like, of course. But I'm just gonna override that message which is set in the current file. So I have to call super, otherwise, uh, the TypeScript compiler won't be that happy. And we're gonna set that message to Android application context dot get oh, get package name. So and let me see, is there anything else we need to do? I don't think so. Yeah. Something uh, I've screwed up before is that I'm now editing the <coughs> TypeScript definition file instead of the TypeScript file. It's just a, an honest mistake. Um, you need to click the correct file. It's this one really you need to implement. So you also see that the completion will be a lot better this way. You can largely ignore this TypeScript definition file actually because it's being generated based on your TypeScript file, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so here you see it's lots better. And let's run the demo again. Um, so for iOS, of course, there's the same kind of one-liner you need to implement, but there's already a plugin doing this, so why replicate everything? Um, so where is it going to extract this package name from, really? That's this demo app, app resources folder, and there's an Android folder in here, which has an app.gradle file. And this is the application ID that's being extracted. And in the in the build folder uh, of your platform, there's the Android manifest XML, and that's also where this starter 
uh, our NativeScript starter ID is going to be in. Um, so let's see, TypeScript compiler can take a long time. Um, what you're doing right now, if you see that uh, everything here has been overridden, this is still what it was, and this has been extended uh, or really generated by TypeScript compiler. And well, let's just wait for it to finish. But this is again a bit messier, but still you can use JavaScript if you like. But um, this seed really expects you to use TypeScript. There's also uh, probably a non-TypeScript seed. I'm not sure even if there is. But really use this. It's way more convenient as you see. Um, so compiling may take a bit of time, but then you can think about having other features, uh, implementing the same feature for iOS simultaneously, of course. Um, tweet about your upcoming cool new plugin, whatever. So, successfully deployed. Now let's see. So, like I said, it should be... Um, this, really. So, here we go. Yay, it works. And that's still there because we're calling super so, uh, in our implementation. So you still get that as a bonus. The implementation of super is still, hey, show me that nice little pop up. So once you're done creating your plugin and you've updated the README with snippets and you have uh, created nice screenshots or whatnot, uh, then you can commit everything here uh, and push it, throw it on your GitHub profile, and make sure you also do an npm publish, which I'm not going to do now, but it will publish your plugin with uh, the name you configured in your package.json with a version you configured over here as well. Now people can use it by doing TNS install, a TNS plugin add, native script package name, and then they can use it exactly the same features as what you are doing in your little demo app. So, uh, happy plugin creating and see you next time. Cheers.